Hello, thanks for joining us. I'm going over the center line of the forearm again, which this is part two, so check out part one. But um, we've got Rick here, thank you very much. He's gonna throw a punch, I'm just gonna kind of react and then we'll slow it down and take a look from there. So he throws a punch and because he hit me here, this part, the back part, flew over into the Foxile strike which is kind of nasty. It would have been on the bridge of the nose or an eye rig or and it followed up with the uh, eye gouge. This is not a sport here. We're talking kind of self-defense at this point. But um, let's do another one. I throw a punch. I, again, it happened on this side of my arm, not this side. So that would come over and I go, I go, I keep going from there. So it's not a pre-planned thing where I'm doing jab, cross, hook, uppercut. That's fine, that's good, we wanna study that as well. But this is more cultivating sensitivity, reactivity in a relaxed body for speed, right? Why was Bruce Lee so fast? Why was Muhammad Ali so fast? Why can Canelo Alvarez slip so many punches? Because he's relaxed about it. Right, so we have to be relaxed, but with forward intention. Now, I don't know which one he's gonna throw now, what he's gonna do. If he throws that one, because it hit here, I kind of went with the motion a little bit and then went in, right? So that would be kind of a reaction there. That time I did a cow sow. And again, this is not pre-planned. We, we talked about what we might talk about, but I don't know what he's gonna do. I'm just gonna do something. The intention though is to go in there, right? Because so, he hit, he hit this part and that was the most economical strike, right? So we always have to consider the five principles of Wing Chun if we're doing this stuff. Center line, which I wanna be inside, facing. I'm kinda of half facing because of the video, but center line, facing, forward intention. I wanna get in, I wanna get in, I wanna get in with my feelers, right? Um, economy of motion. That's what, that was that one. He threw that and I felt it here. So the economy of motion was just taking that baby strike and the inside pack. And you say, well, what about the other arm? Well, that would have been dealt with anyway because I was attacking the head, um, which would greatly reduce the impact of the other arm. So we don't chase the arms, but we deal with them as we're going in. And simplicity, that's the, so center line facing, forward intent, economy of motion and simplicity. We want to look for what's simplest. Let's have him do another one. Boom, 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 boom. And we, we keep going, right? So let's slow down just one hair. If I throw a punch and he hits it there, this one, the forward intention dictates that I have to keep going in. And then you say, well, that's an awkward fight. Dis exactly. It's an awkward fight distance that most people don't want to do. They want to be out here exchanging blows. We want to make them very awkward. So I like this new uh, phone book fighting. Have you seen that in the phone booth or the, the old school? That's perfect for Wing Chun type stuff. And it's very good for self-defense guys because we're supposed to get the, if he's bigger and stronger than me and I'm a little female, I can't do this kind of stuff. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, I could, not being sexist here, but I would have to get in and get nasty if I want to survive the assault, the rape, the whatever, um, in some cases. So we have to be building reactivity and forward intention, forward intention, forward intention. Because a lot of the taller, bigger fighters want to keep this distance or they want to just go all the way in. But there's an in-between range that's that Wing Chun range. And that's why we practice this Chi Sao type positioning. So you're not gonna be sitting there all day, but maybe for a second, we do for a second, and then we've got hits, we've got strikes, we've got nastiness, and we're, we're flowing in. That's it for today.